Japan's education system consistently scores amongst the top in internationally ranked math and science tests. Additionally, Japan has a literacy rate of 99%. A huge reason for Japan's success is ingrained in their work ethic, emphasis on education, obtaining competitive degrees, and contributing to society as a whole. This mark of excellence, however, comes with a heavy cost for Japan, especially on its youth. Recently, rising levels of depression, anxiety, social isolation, and suicide have become more prevalent in the society that at first glance seems to be doing so well. Even though the Japanese youth academically exceeds countries all over the world, why is it that this success isn't being translated into life satisfaction and happiness? Japan's education system is one of the best in the world. Their math and science scores consistently rank amongst the top five countries in the world. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development found that fewer students in Japan struggle and drop out of school, with the country's high school graduation rate at 96.7%, while the U.S. rate sits at 83. However, many studies have suggested that Japanese children are tired because they are busy and sleep deprived. Children do not establish their lifestyle on their own, but are influenced by schools, family, and the society. One study looking at Japanese elementary school students showed that students were easily getting tired, busy, and easily annoyed. One researcher notices the vast differences between previously working in Australia and then moving to Japan. So, after transitioning from Australia's education system to Japan's, the biggest difference I saw was that Japanese students, although they excelled academically, they struggled with stress and anxiety. The difference is due to the fact that Japan revolves around a more collectivist society where Australians are more of an individualistic society, promoting their independent roles in all aspects of their lives. And these cultural differences play a huge role in the ways these two education systems contrast. This and other factors have translated into lower levels of happiness. Other Asian countries perform well, but are also among the most unhappy. Four of the top 10 happiest are in Latin America, with the Dominican Republic at number one. The collectivist culture in Japan has a huge emphasis on how students perceive themselves and how they behave. Anxiety and stress is often undermined to promote their reputations of you know, the school and how they excel academically. So it's essential that people follow the rules and have the same opinions as others in Japan, but you can have the case where a lot of students are excluded. What I see is that the Japanese education system is often just mainstreaming their students. And the harm of this is that mental illness can then therefore be seen as a weakness or a failure on the individual's behalf. This also causes parents to overlook these feelings of stress and anxiety and students themselves to suppress them. It can lead to deeper mental health illnesses. Education is not all about making students happy, of course, but neither is it something we should ignore. And in the quest for school improvement, searching for the formula that combines success with happiness is not a bad place to start. So the thing is that children, unlike adults, can't really articulate their deeper feelings. A lot of times these symptoms of depression come out in forms like violence, uh, shoplifting, other things that really don't look like depression. Um, and a lot of times, these uh, certain deeper mental illness factors go overlooked by uh, mental health professionals and doctors. Conflicting evaluations by teachers and parents about children's behavioral and emotional problems may often puzzle mental health professionals due to inconsistency. Hokkaido University has done extensive research that's conveyed that 1 in 12 elementary students are suffering from depression and this is often an underreport because of the stigma behind it. Japan's drastically declining birth rate and increasing ratio of children who go on to higher grade schools means that parents may have greater expectations on their children. Konnichiwa, watashi no namae wa Nakamura Sakura desu. Watashi wa chukakko de hachinensei desu. Rainen koko o hajimete nyukakku shiken ni tsuite honto ni kincho shitemasu. Hokkaido 
強調しています。私のクラスメートも多くのプレッシャーを受けていて、同じ心を応募しています。私たちがすべて競い合っているように感じるので、今は難しいです。学校ではやるべきことやたくさんの宿題があります。非常に早く目を覚まし、時には非常に遅く学校に泊まります。だから、両親の頻繁に見かけることがありません本当に知っているのは彼らは成績でとてもうまくやりたいと思っています。According to Japan Times, out of 35 countries polled, only South Korea and Turkish teens rated their life satisfaction lower than Japan. Furthermore, Japanese age 15 to 21 ranked to the lowest level of net happiness of all countries polled, with more Japanese young people saying that they were unhappy. What's really heartbreaking is that I know these kids, I know that they're really smart, they're really dedicated,、um, but then you, you see them kind of outside the classroom and they just look so tired. Sometimes they just look so. Unhappy,、um, and it's obviously this super stress of academia is weighing on top of them. And I, I think, I, you know, I, I've tried approaching them, asking if I could help in any way, but I think it's just this mental model that, that has been created、uh, by families, by the society that we have、uh, in the country, is just kind of weighing down on them and preventing them from speaking about things because it's seen as such a stigma. Since 2014, suicide has become Japan's leading cause of death in children aged 10 to 19, and the rate of child suicide keeps rising despite the decreasing overall suicide rate. A World Health Organization report shows that with 70 daily suicides, Japan's suicide rate is actually 60% higher than the global average. All I can think of is death. I realize that once you die, it's all over. Still, if there is a next life, I'd like to come back as an animal, like my pet dog, who doesn't cause anyone any trouble. And even when he does weird things, nobody pays attention. I'm sorry I couldn't be any better than I was. Goodbye. Before reaching such an extreme measure, many teens exhibit social isolation, otherwise known as hikikomori. One activist has made it his life's mission to get the awareness out about such condition. During my time in Japan, I met a man by the name of Watanabe san. He has a 35 year old son and has a condition called Hikamori. The condition means that he is socially withdrawn and he stays at home all day unless he's forced to go out by his parents. The dream was to raise his son to go on to a good secondary school, a good high school, good college, a good company, and find a good match in marriage. But the dream was not realized. His son in high school commuted an hour to work, an hour to school, to a prestigious high school where he eventually withdrew from. He started to miss his trains, his exams, and eventually withdrew completely. He saw a counselor named this Tomati, a certified psychiatrist. Tomati emphasized the need for better communication between parents and children. According to Watanabe san, Tomati told him. That his son had withdrawn in reaction to their pressuring him to study hard and attend only the most prestigious schools. Watanabe's son told me an analogy that was used to explain this. So, when you pickle vegetables, you take the raw vegetables and add salt and squeeze the vegetable in order to become it to, so it can be, become tender. So, the pickling process is added by stone weight. It's called a mashi. So, it sits on the vegetables and the weight helps squeeze any remaining liquid out. So, you squeeze and you squeeze and you squeeze. And this is what's happening to these kids. As a country, we need to help unload this weight. And one way to do this is to reevaluate how we look at relationships. Parents sacrifice their children's happiness. and Do so in the name of academic success. So, simple things like quality time with family, attending your child's sporting events, there needs to be a better balance. I think at the end of the day, what the students really need is their parents' unconditional love. You know, you look at the, the countries with, where the students are the happiest in Central America, and you see time and time again that the, the students are spending a lot of time with their parents after school, even if it's just eating one meal a day、uh, with their families. 
uh, these are contributing factors as to why they're scoring higher in happiness scales. Um, so I, I think that parents in Japan need to encourage their students to kind of focus on life outside of school and focus more on family time. And I think that we'll be able to see a higher spike in happiness levels uh, for years to come and generations to come.